Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Julie Maria. Dr. Maria is the commissioner of the Chicago Department of Public Health. She was officially confirmed just a few weeks ago, following 15 years of service to the department. As Chicago Department of Public Health Medical Director for Immunization, Dr. Morita fostered groundbreaking partnerships with health systems and the private sector, achieving national recognition for both the improvements in and overall coverage rates. Most recently, as Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Morita led the city's efforts to prevent the introduction and spread <coughs> of the Ebola virus, including developing and launching the Chicago Ebola Response Network the first local network of medical centers working jointly to prepare and respond to a possible Ebola case. As a result of her efforts, Chicago was the first jurisdiction in the nation to establish four CDC-approved Ebola response hospitals. Dr. Morita received her medical degree from the University of Illinois at the Chicago Medical Center. Dr. Morita. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the City of Chicago, Mayor Rahm Emanuel, and the Chicago Department of Public Health, thank you uh, for having me here today, and thank you for this uh, important opportunity to talk with you all. Specifically, I'd like to thank uh, Representative Price, Representative Lewis, their staff, Shelly Hearn, and the staff of the Big Cities Health Coalition, and my fellow public health practitioners, Patrice, Jeff, and Wendy. I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about Chicago's work to prepare and respond to potential cases of Ebola and measles, specifically outlining how our city agency serves dual roles, both as a responder to public health emergencies, but also as a convener, bringing other parts of our public health infrastructure to in together to ensure our city and surrounding area are prepared. Neither of these roles would be, po would be possible without the support of Congress and the entire federal government. Indeed, it is the direct support that allowed us to be so successful in Chicago. Chicago is one of the four directly funded um, health departments, uh, large urban areas that's funded by the preparedness uh, program. And it is only with your continued support that we will be able to prepare for the next public health emergency. As you know, Chicago is a global city. As measured by the sheer number of flights that take off and land daily at O'Hare Airport. O'Hare Airport is the busiest airport in the world, resting Patrice's, uh, just in the last year, for the first time in a decade. So that, that together with Midway Airport in Chicago, bringing more than 91 million passengers to Chicago every year. This includes passengers from every corner of the world, including those from West Africa. Add, add to that a vibrant and active West African community living near Lake Michigan, near my home, uh, we knew that as long as the epidemic uh, continued in West Africa, our residents and our health care system would remain vulnerable. We started acting early, and we had the benefit of following and watching what happened in Dallas. We had regular internal meetings as early as August, just as the epidemic was gaining international attention, reviewing our protocols and plans and building the connections in the community to, necessary to ensure our city was prepared. Many of the health care facility um, um, collaborations that we had were based upon work that we've done through the preparedness program on an ongoing basis because we are directly funded. As the crisis worsened in West Africa, and within days of the Dallas patient being diagnosed, I remember people talk about they remember where they were when JFK was shot. I remember where I was when the patient in Dallas was confirmed. I was sitting in Hartsfield, actually, flying back to Chicago. <laughs> and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, my life is going to change for the next months to come. And it's really, really true. Um, but within days of that confirmation, um, because of the preparedness program we have established over the years, we were able to focus our preparedness staff and our resources to four key areas. Our entry point preparedness, because we have O'Hare Airport, community preparedness, health, health system preparedness, and intergovernmental collaboration. O'Hare was designated by the CDC as one of the five U.S. airports that would receive inbound passengers from the impacted countries um, in West Africa. Although the Customs and Border Protection um, Department was actually responsible for doing the screening as the travelers arrived in to Chicago, we had a major role to play as well and established a team of staff out at O'Hare Airport 
O'Hare Airport as soon the day that the Customs and Border Protection screening occurred. And that staff was there to assure that we were able to identify people and facilitate the care of anybody who was identified that was ill upon entry into Chicago, but then also to make sure that we knew of those travelers who were staying in Chicago so we could continue to monitor them on a regular basis for the 21 days after arrival so we could make sure that they didn't actually develop Ebola symptoms. We also led a community preparedness effort, hosting town hall meetings for the West African community members in Chicago, and also hosting many informational and educational sessions for healthcare providers throughout this city. We had actually had our staff walk door to door to over 600 clinics within the city of Chicago to hand deliver clinical guidance and ask, respond to questions that the healthcare providers might have about the risk of Ebola and evaluation of patients with Ebola and what to do if they were worried that they saw somebody with Ebola so they knew where to call. Though it was highly unlikely we wanted to make sure that every one of those offices knew how to respond and that we didn't end up with problems with disease transmission that was unnecessary. Those efforts tie closely with our hospital health care system preparedness efforts. Mayor Emanuel and the Chicago Department of Public Health convened a meeting of the largest hospital systems within the city of Chicago and um, to make sure that they were able and equipped to respond appropriately. From that, me that meeting, the Host Chicago Ebola Resource Network was born. This is the Net4 hospital network that Patrice mentioned earlier, which uh, constitutes, uh, is made up of the University of Chicago, Northwestern Hospital, Rush University Medical Center, and Lurie Children's Hospital. Those four hospitals stepped up and said that they would work together as a network to make sure that we could evaluate patients who were suspected of having Ebola and also provide ongoing care to those patients if they were confirmed to have Ebola. Because we had been preparing, because we had established relationships with CDC, within a, uh, over the weekend, so they committed to this on Friday, the following Monday we had a, a t CDC team in Chicago evaluating each and every one of those hospitals to make sure that they had the adequate resources, they had a, a adequate um, policies and protocols in place so that they could care for the patients safely without putting their own healthcare workers at risk. It was really a, been a, a very heartening experience to work with these hospitals. When you think about what entities I just described to you, they are usually competitors in the city of Chicago. They are not collaborators. And to get them to work together and to work out a rotation where they would um, each take a patient if it came from the community or if it came from O'Hare Airport was really heartwarming. And so uh, I think what we've done is we've built upon that relationship for other non-infectious disease emergency type of um, situations within the city of Chicago, and we're really looking forward to working with, with them on that. But I think they surprised themselves in how well they could actually work together. Though we have screened hundreds of patients in our, in our airport and monitored scores in our city and evaluated um, eight possible cases distributed throughout the network of hospitals to so know one hospital was overburdened, we have not had a case of Ebola. So for you, Wendy, I really, my heart goes out to you for all that you experienced during that time. That said, if we did have a case, I am confident that we have done everything that we could possibly do to prepare. And I do believe a lot of that has to do with the fact that we are directly funded for a direct, directly funded city. Our Ebola preparedness efforts exemplify how our agency has acted as a responder, providing staff on the ground at O'Hare, actively monitoring patients conducting hospital trainings, going door to door to doctor's offices, and also as a convener, bringing major hospital systems together to the table to work together, working with the CDC and Customs and Border Protection, and activating and, and engaging our West African community. Public health should be both a responder and a convener. Ebola is a disease we need to be prepared for. The nations ravaged by Ebola highlight the need for a strong public health infrastructure at all levels to ensure the health and safety of our, com our communities. The West African cities did not have a strong health care or public health system. Because of Congress's support, though, our cities strengthened their preparedness, and we have been able to build public health networks and infrastructure that is saving lives, provide staff at the airport and throughout the city and throughout the city um, actively monitoring individuals returning from Ebola-stricken um, nations. And that we've ensured healthcare providers and first responders have developed and practiced protocols that allow them to evaluate and care for patients while assuring the safety of their healthcare workers. We were also supported to create and prevent, print and distribute materials in English and in French to our West African residents in our city. 
In the past two months, we've received an additional $5.3 million to support our Ebola response. These funds will be used to strengthen our contact tracing, monitoring capabilities, increase training for hospitals and first response teams, help us to establish data systems that will support um, monitoring a large number of uh, contacts. Uh, we'll also be able um, to use the funding to strengthen our infection control capabilities in our healthcare facilities and also our um, first responders. Ongoing and consistent emergency preparedness funding is critical to our healthcare system so that we have the infrastructure, resources, and staff to respond before a crisis starts. If not for the additional resource Ebola funding, we would have seen a decline in preparedness funds this year. Before concluding, I do want to talk a little bit about measles. Um, because of my background as immunization program medical director for over 12 years at the city of Chicago, measles is a disease that is near and dear to my heart, or prevention of measles is, it, is near and dear to my heart. The federal government also helps us uh, prepare uh, by finding robust immunization programs. And again, the city of Chicago is a great beneficiary of the funding. We get directly funded for our immunization program as well. It ensures that our residents, particularly our children, are safe. In 2000, the U.S. declared that measles was eliminated. In February 2015, we had a cluster of cases that, was di that were diagnosed at a daycare center in suburban Cook County, just, which is just outside of Chicago. 12 of 15 cases were among children under one year of age. There was an index case was less than a year of age in a classroom of all children under one year of age, so none of them had received their measles vaccine. So when we identified the first case, we knew it was just a matter of time before the rest of the child's classmates actually became ill, and it was true. Within a week, 12, 11 of his classmates actually became ill. CDPH worked with the county, the state, and CDC to identify people suspected of having measles, contacted others who had been exposed, uh, ensured their immunization status, and then we also monitored them as well. Some of what we applied in Ebola actually had helped us to monitor these other patients as well, or these other contacts as well in this situation. CDC also, I'm sorry, CDPH also uh, coordinated two webinars reminding healthcare personnel about how to diagnose the disease, what testing to do, what to report to the health department, and also about um, the importance of vaccination. Even though we feel like this is core to what we all do and healthcare providers do, there's never, uh, it's never enough, we can't rest assured that people don't need to be reminded, and so we did this. What I thought was really striking is that within a week of the case being diagnosed, we had two webinars with nearly a thousand healthcare providers who participated. So to us, that was a remarkable response, but it was a testament to the infrastructure that we had established because of the immunization funding that we receive on an ongoing basis. Because of the herd protection that we have in place, because of the strong immunization program that we have, the cluster did not spread outside of the daycare center. Because the adults worked at the daycare facility, most of the, all of them were immunized. Uh, most of the parents of the children were immunized, and most of the people in the community were immunized. We had no disease spread, and we were very, very fortunate. I think Jeff has more <laughs> information about how bad measles spread can actually be. So CDPH relies on federal immunization funding to conduct surveillance for vaccine preventable diseases and to assure that our children have access to vaccines regardless of their ability to pay. We also use the funding to educate um, both the public and also healthcare providers. This funding is critical to our children's safety. In order to keep our protection strong, we need to ensure that all children have access to vaccines and our disease control systems are, are robust. In conclusion, in conclusion, we all know the question is not, will there be another public health emergency? The question is when. This is why ongoing, consistent federal support for preparedness and response and immunization work is vital to our big cities. In Chicago, nearly 100 million people travel through our airports every year. They bring so many wonderful things with them, economic opportunity, knowledge sharing and expertise, entrepreneurial spirit. Gifts that are allowed our city and nation to grow and thrive and become the place that it is today. But it only takes one of those 100 million people to bring a virus or disease with them into our city, whether Ebola, measles, or something we don't even know about at this point. That's why we need to be prepared. And that's why we need an ongoing commitment from the federal government to support our efforts and keep our city and our nation safe. Thank you.